Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and I'm with three very special people who met each other just in passing over a big project called the Slover Library. And Harry Lester, I'm going to come to you first because I have about three pages of things you've been involved in that I have to go through. That's because Should we I'm just old. cut to the chase? <laughs> Yeah. A lot of people know you from EVMS, from just being a, a, a civic leader in the community, Chrysler Museum of Art, it, the list goes on and on, but today we're here to talk about Slover. You want to kind of give me two sentences on what Slover is. Wow, I could give you a lot more than that. Two sentences. Um, libraries today, exceptional libraries today, are more than books and history and technology and the Slover will be an extraordinary, exceptional library. Yeah. It'll be our village green. It'll be a place to convene, to talk about important issues of the day. It's our democracy. It's our village green. And it's the answer to that age-old question for the last couple of, several months, where people got off the, the light rail at MacArthur Square, looked over and said, what in the world is that? Sonal, it's a vision, right? It really is a vision. Um, it's beyond books. It's a place for civic engagement. It's a place for ex uh, displaying exceptional technology, interactives, and what have you. Uh, it's a blend of, as I've always said, old and new, contemporary and traditional. So it really has that vision coming all together very soon. And through the transition, very subtle but very significant, we've moved from the um, uh, Sergeant Memorial room to a Sergeant Memorial collection. Correct. Right? Okay, David Sullivan, it's uh, a bunch of books, so what has an IT guy got to do with this? That, that's a good question. How does <laughs> an IT guy get pulled into this project? Uh, actually, uh, I have some experience with, as a assistant city manager in Virginia Beach, with libraries as one of my areas of responsibility for a while, but uh, probably gave me just enough knowledge to be dangerous. But um, the technology played a big part in this building and we're doing a lot of things that the system in Norfolk really hadn't done before and we're doing a few things that we think probably no library has done before so the technology is is underneath of all that but really what's important is the content and the information that that technology is going to bring to people who come and use the library uh, so th to me, that's what's exciting, is getting it out of a filing cabinet, getting it out of an envelope and into somebody's hands. Okay, cool. Now, so I'm, gonna, I'm debating about this, if I should even, I'm going to ask you. Because there's a viewer out there that says, boy, I wish they hadn't done away with the Kern. Is this the Kern replacement? It's more than a Kern okay. replacement. I think it's, it's, it's as it's touted, um, it's, it's beyond current. It's beyond a main library. It's beyond downtown. It's going to serve really um, being the vision that it carries um, of being one of the most technologically advanced uh, libraries in the country, um, maybe even world. Um, uh, I think it's going to do beyond what books did for Kern and some computers to an extent, but it, it's going to have a blend, a beautiful blend of the two. Um, and, and more importantly, as libraries have become destination uh, for families, for people of all ages, that's what it's going to really serve as. Okay, now Sonal and David, you guys have been kind of engaged over the last many months in coming out of the ground. How many months has it taken to come out of the ground? Well, so months and days. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. We started in, in April of 2012 with a groundbreaking, so okay. we're, you know, we're coming up on about 30 months, I think. That's so, correct. Uh, so it's, it's yes. a significant structure that was built. But prior to that, when it was a vision, whose vision was it? Harry? I would have to give Paul Frame the vision. He's been the mayor for some time in Norfolk, and he is a visionary. And he um, had the good fortune of uh, having a wonderful relationship with Frank Batten. Mm -hmm. Frank Batten is a great corporate citizen and a philanthropist, and he and his wife have invested $40 million in a public building. Uh, unheard of in my realm. Uh, you got it. And, you know, because I'm sitting here, you know, at the, about the time that this was the vision, we were probably working our way through being one of the most fiscally stressed cities in the, in the country. And if you try to do it through the traditional government way, it probably would never happen, right? 
we could have had a modest replacement for Kern. Mm -hmm. And then, that's true. We yeah, could. and we probably wouldn't be doing this segment either. We wouldn't. <laughs> so, uh, how did how did you get involved? Because I, I I remember the day you got involved. David came in. He's rather usually a somber guy. <laughs> he was almost doing a a, a, a dance. Uh, how did you get in involved in this then? The uh, straight story is that I'm a friend of the Battens and uh, have been a friend of the Battens and Jane Batten um, asked me if I would uh, get involved. I was given a um, piece of paper like you have in your lap and it didn't have anything on it and that was my job description. <laughs> so it was intriguing to say the least but um, it was to it was to take where take this fabulous library and figure out how to engage the public, how to have the civic engagement. Really, I love the word democracy. I love to say, we want to convene, we want to bring people in here. So, I don't know how I'm going to do it, except that i got about 20 thought leaders that are trying to help me think of ways to do those things over and above what both of these folks do, uh, which is, which is uh, I mean, you've got to see it to believe it. It's that good. Right. It's very exciting. Let's talk about, because the Battens, I mean, they were really the, the boulder that came in and made it happen. That's and correct. I, I remember the day of the, of the groundbreaking. But it really has been a community coming together, hasn't it? How have you pulled that off? <laughs> I love having humble guests on the show. <laughs> I'd say most of the heavy lifting was done before I got here, so uh, I just sort of showed up at the right time. Um, just on David's side, um, easy, the Battens wanted it, full of technology. She wants it full of technology. And um, Paul Frame asked me one day if I looked at the library in San Diego, brand new library, took him years to put it together, checked it out, called David, said, how do we stack up? He said, we got them on a couple of things. We're just as good, technology-wise. Cool. So we got it all. Because I mentioned the city, but really this is going to be a regional entity, isn't it? I have explained again to my friend Paul Frame that um, it has a Norfolk address. It's a regional building. Mm -hmm. This building will serve the, the region, and, and he's comfortable with that. Cool. Okay, we know it's going to be bigger and better than anything, even that the beach might have. Mm -hmm. Does it have books? It does. How many books? Over 160,000 volumes. Wow. From, yes. does it have a research section? It does have a research section in, in the sense of SMC because we still want to keep that blend of traditional mm -hmm. and contemporary. So it, it still has um, definite research capabilities in uh, SMC folks that used to uh, come to Kern mm -hmm. and use the collection will be able to use it in the same way. Okay. Uh, how about a card catalog? We have moved away from card Okay. Uh, Bob. <laughs> okay, and replace it with, this is where he gets all excited, that, right? Well, online catalog, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that actually has been true for all our branches, NPL. Um, so Slover is not unique in that regard, okay. but we'll continue with the same, except we do have self-checkouts. Um, really? Yes, we do. So that's the uniqueness of Slover right there. Okay. Uh, Kid Zone. Yes, sir. Kid Zone. What's it going to be I'm like? I'm excited. You got me excited. Now. I know. What's a Kid Zone um, like? Second floor is going to be buzzing with families, with kids. So we have Playscape that caters to the zero to two year age group. Kid Zone does three to six. Um, we have Art Studio on that floor, which is very unique to Slover again. Something almost unheard of in many libraries, uh, other than you know West Coast libraries. So we'll be quite unique on the East Coast with that. Uh, we we have a great programming room capability. So we have a slew of things going on up on the second floor. Um, so I don't hear a lot of whispering going on then. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Activity. Okay. We uh, don't want it to. Kids to whisper anymore. <laughs> Does this mean I can come in? Yeah. I, Absolutely. As we've talked, yes. I've gotten thrown out of more yes. libraries, but yeah. this one I can come to. Okay, vending machines. Is it going to be food? Well, absolutely. We have a bistro coming up. Uh, we have, um, yeah, it's going to be a 52 seater um, bistro, and um, so people can bring in their coffee and um, have food and drinks right there in the cafe. So. Okay, I know you're going to want to talk about this, but I'm going to hit David with this one. Okay. Swooping going on? 
word walls, mm -hmm. end cap directories. Yep. This is where you get it. You almost get more excited about this than you did about having Harry come on board. <laughs> well, the, the technology in this building, uh, I've told many people I've been at this a while and done a lot of exciting projects in my career that I've been a part of, but I've never been a part of something that's this exciting from a technology stand, pure technology standpoint. So we have um, an, an interactive, large touchscreen environment on the third floor of what was the formerly the Seaboard Building, a 115-year-old historic building that has been beautifully restored and is the home of the Sargent Memorial Collection, which is the third largest collection of history and materials in the state of Virginia. So it's a, it's a grand collection. Uh, we have well over 100,000 uh, negatives and photographs from mostly from the first half of the 20th century. Uh, many of them donated to the collection 50, 60, 70 years ago. They've largely resided in file folders, envelopes, uh, negatives from old press cameras. And we have scanned about 8,000 of those images so far. We're continuing to scan them. And they are in an interactive database, uh, filling up the whole third floor area with um, a whole series of very large touch screens. And these images float by as you walk by. And you can grab one. You can enlarge it. They're scanned at a very high resolution, so literally the pictures come alive. You can make them like three foot high by four foot wide. Um, when we were testing, one story I like to tell, we were working on the prototypes. We had some of the database in, and somebody came in, and he was looking through some pictures, and there was a picture from the 1920s of two women at an equestrian event, and uh, they were sitting there in their Sunday fine clothes, and he said, uh, we read the names on the, on the uh, catalog information, and he said, that name's familiar. I wonder if I have a friend who has that same last name took a picture of the screen, showed it to his friend, and it happened to be his mother. So oh, wow. things, I think, in the past, when you look at pictures on the internet, small pictures, they don't really jump out at you. Sometimes in printed material they can, but a lot of times they're still small. Here they literally come alive, and you can see the faces of many of the people who formed the early part of southeastern Virginia's history. When, when we take people through uh, the, the sneak preview, some of these thought leaders I was referring to, they're stuck there every time. They get to there and they're not too keenly interested in looking at the rest of the stuff. These screens cover a whole wall and other tables and literally, as David said, you can take a picture that this, that's this big and make it this big so that you can see wow. what these people look like. You know, uh, January 9th, 10th, and 11th are going to be a very special weekend here in Norfolk with the opening of Slover, uh, beginning at 10 o'clock with a, a very special person checking out a book. Of her choice? Yes, our Mrs. Batten. And yeah. then this place will come alive. And unfortunately, I'm getting the close sign for this, which means you're going to have to come back on, or better yet, the viewer's going to have to get down to okay. the address is? 235 East Plume Street. One you know well. Yes. Come on down, uh, catch the light rail, come on down on that opening weekend and begin a brand new life. Skipped one thing. Oh, yeah. 130 public computers available. Walk in, they're yours. Wow. Right. 130. And Harry, I'm looking forward to working closer with you Come on. as you work through your retirement when, with the Slover. When, when I figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thanks a lot for everything that you guys have done in bringing that vision alive, but more importantly, bringing our entire community together in a fantastic gathering spot for the future. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us.